So we know that if we apply the L plus or minus operator to an eigenfunction, we will get another eigenfunction. But if we start off with a normalized uh, eigenfunction, once we apply this operator, the output, although it will still be an eigenfunction, it will not be normalized. So if we want this function and this function to be normalized, we need to add this adjusting factor over here. So the purpose of this problem is to derive a formula for this factor in terms of M and L. And that is what we're going to do in this video. And then in order to find the value, uh, the formula for this factor, we need to first show that uh, the Hermitian conjugate for L plus or minus is actually L minus plus. So when I say that this is the Hermitian conjugate of this, that means the formula uh, F uh, in a product L plus or minus G will be equal to L minus plus of F in a product with G. So if we can establish this relationship, then this will be a proof that L minus plus is the Hermitian conjugate of L plus minus. And then proving this will allow us to eventually derive the formula for A. So we will first focus on deriving this relationship. So in order to show that L minus plus is the Hermitian conjugate of L plus minus, we start off with the left-hand side expression, and then we work to see if this leads to the right-hand side expression. So we start off with this, and then we apply the definition for L plus minus. That's just equal to LX plus I L Y G. And then since th these are all uh, this, uh, linear operators, I can always break apart the bracket like this. So I can break, so this is plus minus. So plus minus I F L Y G. And since LX and L Y are operators for observables, we know that they are Hermitian operators. And that means I can move this operator to the front without changing the value of the inner product. So this is just equal to LXF G plus or minus I LYF G. And then now I can also absorb this plus or minus I inside. So I can absorb this plus or minus inside and it becomes minus plus I because if we are uh, if this i is here uh, in the in the left hand side component uh, i need to apply it, it turns into a conjugate and so that flips the sign of the imaginary term so this becomes minus plus i and so we get something like this and then now we can recombine these two terms and it becomes lx minus plus i ly of f and then g and then this expression is just equal to this expression here is just uh, l minus plus of f g and so we can see that uh, l minus plus uh, operator is the Hermitian conjugate of the l plus minus operator and so this concludes our proof for this relationship and then now using this relationship now we can move on to deriving uh, this uh, the formula for this expression now before I begin the derivation of the factor a I'm just going to write down this relationship between the operators and this will be useful later on. So this is a relationship that was derived in the example in the book, so you can look this up if you're unfamiliar with this. So I'm just going to use this uh, for the rest of this video. So in order to finish our proof, we're going to start off with this expression. So we're going to start off with this expression, and then uh, instead of this operator, I will replace it with this expression. So I will replace this operator with L square minus LZ square and then minus plus H bar LZ F and then ML. And then you can see that for this expression, first of all, we have a L square applied to F and then ML. And then by definition, this is just equal to H bar square L L plus one F ML. And because we know this because this is the eigenvalue for this eigen uh, eigenfunction, and so that's why we get h bar square l l plus 1 multiplied by f ml. And then the same goes for lz, something similar happens. So first of all we apply lz to the function f, and this gives us m h bar f, and then if we apply lz square, so we've, if we apply lz to this function again, that's just equal to applying lz to this expression again, which gives us another m h bar, so that becomes m square h bar square. So here this becomes minus m square h bar square f. And then here we have lz applied to the function f. So this becomes minus plus h bar times h bar m and then the function f. 
and so this is what we have so far and then let's rearrange this in a slightly better form so you can see that I can pull out the h bar square so we have l, l plus 1 we have a minus m square uh, the h bar square has already been pulled out and then we also have uh, minus plus m and then all this is multiplied to the function f and then now I can actually, this entire expression here, you can see that this is just a real valued constant. So I can pull this outside of the entire inner product. So I'll just pull this out. So once I do this, I get h bar square L, L plus 1, and then minus m, m plus minus 1. So I'm just grouping up these two m terms. And then since there's a negative sign outside, the minus plus becomes a plus minus. And then this entire thing will be multiplied to the inner product of the function f with itself. Now, by the assumptions of this problem, we already know that this function is normalized. So this inner product is just equal to 1. So this whole thing is just equal to 1. So we're just left with these constants. So we're just left with these constants. And so this is what we obtain from this expression. We apply this relationship, and then we see that this inner product is equal to these constants. But then another way to evaluate this inner product is to apply the relationship that we just derived, is to apply the fact that L minus plus is the Hermitian conjugate of L plus minus. And then once we apply this fact, so let's move on to here. So let's just write out this expression again. So another way to evaluate this inner product is to use the fact, so I'm just copying this down, so F, so the other way to evaluate this expression is to apply the fact that uh, the Hermitian conjugate of this operator is just L plus minus. So I can now move this operator to the front, and so we get something like this. And then if you take a look at this expression here, we have L plus minus of the function f, and that's just equal to our adjusting constant multiplied by the next eigenfunction, the next normalized eigenfunction. And so this is just equal to a m l and then f m plus 1 l and then we have a m l f m plus 1 l and so this is what we have so these are constants so i can pull this constant out so this becomes a m l and i can also pull this constant out and because it's in the left hand component it's the conjugate of a m l so when both of these multiply together you get the absolute value square of a m l so of course i can always choose a to be a real number but uh, technically I should this is treated as a complex number so we have the absolute value square of the f constant a and then we have f m plus 1 l f m plus 1 l and once again we by the assumptions of this problem we assume that these the uh, this function is normalized so this entire expression is equal to 1 and so you can see that this inner product is equal to uh, our constant squared so using two different methods we got two different expressions, but there are just different ways of evaluating the same expression. So they should be equal. So that means the absolute value square of AML is precisely equal to this expression. And so this implies AML is equal to h bar times the square root of L, L plus 1 minus M, M plus minus 1. And so there you have it. This is how you solve this problem.